Welcome to Fume Hood Safety. This video is brought to you by Airmaster Systems. You can visit us on the web at airmastersystems.com. Let's quickly review the important rules and guidelines. Always make sure you have the proper safety glasses and safety gloves. Make sure that your appropriate clothing is always worn in the lab. Sometimes a lab coat is required. Always follow safe practice rules and protocols for your facility. This can vary from place to place. Never allow your head to enter the plane of the sash in a fume hood opening. Always keep the vertical sash below your face, and if you're using a horizontal sash, make sure it is positioned in front of you. You should be working while reaching around the sash to get into the hood. Make sure that nothing is blocking the airflow through the baffles or through the baffle exhaust slots. Elevate all large equipment at least two inches for better airflow. Do not make rapid movements around a fume hood. Always move your hand in a direct line of motion. Always keep materials at least six inches inside of the face of the sash. And always close the sash when not working in the fume hood. Now let's quickly overview the fume hood components. Remember, all fume hoods are built uniquely, so check the components on your hood. The airflow sensor is a very important piece of equipment that monitors and measures the airflow through your fume hood. This is to be calibrated in the field. When your airflow goes above or below the set parameters, an alarm will sound to alert the user of this situation. The fixture handles on the front of your fume hood control the services on your fume hood. These are individually labeled with the appropriate services. The angle fixtures that are inside of your fume hood are designed to connect the hoses to them for experiments. If your hood has a blower switch, this will turn your fume hood on and off. Fume hoods have several GFI electrical plugs for using with equipment. Louvers are provided for bypass on constant air volume hoods only. The light switch is connected to your built-in lighting in your fume hood. Distillation racks are designed to hold your laboratory equipment and hoses. These are mounted to the fume hood on the back wall. The sash is the protective sliding glass on the front of your fume hood. The sash is also to help protect your body from any unexpected physical harm, like a bad reaction in the fume hood or potentially worse, an explosion. For constant air volume hoods, as you raise the sash up, the face velocity drops. As you lower the sash, the face velocity will increase. Depending on how your HVAC system was designed will determine the face velocity of the fume hood. Variable air volume hoods maintain a constant velocity at any sash height. Now, that doesn't mean that you should keep your sash open high. We always want to work at a safe 18 inches or lower with our sash. This will help protect our face and our body. All right, now that we know some of the basic rules, let's put our safety glasses on. Perfect. Let's get our safety gloves on too, just so we don't get anything dangerous on our hands. All right. Fire up your fume hood by turning on the on button, and let's go right over to the lights and make sure those are turned on also. Let's inspect the sash first. It should open and close correctly. There should not be any issues with your sash as this protects your face. It is also very important to inspect your airflow to make sure your hood is functioning correctly. If you do not have the appropriate equipment, you can always hire a service to come do this. All right, let's take a look at a properly functioning hood. As you can see, the fumes were exhausted very quickly when the fume hood was just turned on. Now, it's very important to always start with your hood turned on, but we're just doing a visual example. We're also going to show you what it looks like when it's not turned on and not functioning correctly. Let's go ahead and turn that off and take a look at what happens. As you can see, the fumes are now starting to escape the hood. And the worst part is they're coming towards the front of the sash where you're breathing. This can be harmful or fatal. I sure don't like the looks of this. Can you please turn the hood back on? Thank you. All right, now that we're safe again, let's move along to the next step. All right, a visual smoke test is a great way to see how your fume hood functions. Now, as Marissa brings the smoke back and forth across the face of the hood, you can see that it's being drawn into the hood. Now, never bring a chemical outside the hood, but for an example here, we're showing that the airfoil draws air through the bottom and the top as she goes over it and under it. All right, let's bring that sash down a little lower now. As you can see immediately, the velocity increases. This is the reason why you wanna always operate with your sash at the lowest height possible that is comfortable to work with your arms underneath the sash. This should always be below your face, no matter what. As she raises the sash up, you'll notice the velocity starts to go down. Airmaster Systems makes a high performance hood, so as you can see, the hood is still functioning excellent, even with the sash at 18 inches. A very important thing to keep in mind is that the room has to have the proper balance for the correct airflow through the fume hood. 
If your room's airflow is not balanced correctly, you will not get the performance out of your fume hood that you desire. So simply stated, an adequate amount of air must enter the room in order to exit the room at the correct amount of airflow that you are seeking. As you can see with our fume hood, the room and the fume hood are both balanced very well. As Marissa is bringing this smoke back and forth, it is functioning no matter what height we have our sash set to. This is a very important thing when you have your laboratory set up correctly. Remember, this should be done in advance before any research or experiments are performed in this fume hood. Uh-oh, this doesn't look good at all. The sash is entirely too high and we are working way too close to the front of the hood. As you can see, we turned off the fume hood for dramatic effect. With the sash opened up too high and with your experiments way too close to the front, this is a dangerous situation that should be avoided at all cost. Always be working at a minimum of six inches inside of your fume hood. And always make sure that your sash is closed so it is below your face. The lower the better is always safer. This looks a lot better. Great job, Marissa. A fume hood is not a storage compartment. Make sure that you keep all objects out of the fume hood that are not a part of the experiment. This will block the appropriate airflow and will cause contamination to the room. Breathing this contamination can be very harmful if not fatal. Warning, never put your head inside of a fume hood. Well, we're happy that Marissa is still with us. Always make sure all equipment inside of your fume hood is elevated at least two inches. This allows for proper airflow into the baffles. Also make sure to store all extra chemicals in the proper storage. Do not leave them in the fume hood while you're working with other experiment. This doesn't look good at all. If you see your hood is not functioning correctly, immediately close the sash and make a phone call to the appropriate personnel that help with the situation. Do not stay in the room as your air may become contaminated and harmful. It is also important to keep the caps on all chemicals that are not in use. Quick movements in a laboratory can disrupt airflow. It is very important to walk slowly through a laboratory and also to work in direct movements. Reaching straight in and straight out of the hood is the best recommendation. It is also very important to keep track of all the chemicals stored under or near your fume hood. Make sure that all the caps are secure so that way spills and leaks are kept to a minimum. If a spill does occur in your fume hood, it is important to move all of the chemicals away from the spill. It is also important to clean this area up thoroughly and immediately. This concludes all the basics of your fume hood safety video. We thank you for watching it. And remember, there is no replacement for safety in a laboratory. From all of your friends at Airmaster Systems, we wish you great success. If you would like to learn more about our casework, our fume hoods, or our laboratory furniture, please visit us at airmastersystems.com.